Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. In this video I wanted to talk a bit about changing rackets, uh, having too many rackets in your bag or not knowing what racket to use for a serious match. Uh, that can be a big problem, I've experienced it recently. I've played a couple of tournaments and I've used a different racket in pretty much each match and uh, I've used sometimes a different racket uh, several I've, and sometimes I've even used three different rackets in one match and it's not been great of course the way uh, I need to do when I review rackets I need I review a lot of rackets it's just become like my, kind of my life this thing uh, which is weird but that's my situation right now which I'm, I'm thankful for in a way but it can also be detrimental to my tennis so I wanted to give you the advice to try to if you can't settle on one frame, at least have a list of two, three rackets which you play with and that you uh, feel 100% at home with. They could be different for different situations. You could uh, use, for example, a more open pattern, stiffer frame for doubles, for easier volleying, faster reflexes. Maybe it's a bit lighter. Uh, could be a different, um, could be a good idea for doubles, for example. And uh, you could use a more control oriented frame for singles. You could technically, for heavier hitters, have a heavier spec frame, so it's, you get more stability on your returns when you're playing guys that serve uh, really heavy serves. Uh, or you could have a racket that's uh, a little bit easier to put away shots with when you play guys who have uh, who play with little power or these types of moon ballers, etc. So you could have a couple of different frames. Just throwing the idea out there might not be great for everyone, but for some who are in this kind of racket jungle and, and gear jungle. This, this kind of setup could work. It's a little bit how it's been for me. I now have a match ready racket list that I use uh, with a couple of different frames on it. Uh, I published this on Patreon a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's gonna change uh, all the time, of course, with, since I review rackets all the time. But it's, it's a list that I uh, will at least keep in some kind of rotation. I try not to stray outside the list too much. Uh, and it's been five, six different rackets. And uh, I wanted to put the new uh, Radical Pro on that list, and uh, I think I will. Uh, I still need a bit more time with it. It has a smaller sweet spot and it's not that easy to use, but when I play well, it feels fantastic and it does most things well uh, as well. And uh, so it's definitely worthy to be on the MRR list. Uh, another frame that's on the MRR list that I love using is the Pure Storm. Uh, Tour GT uh, from 2011, I think. Uh, I could be wrong, could be nine. But this one is just a great frame. I, I feel 100% at home with uh, with this racket. A little bit launchy at times uh, on my backhand, but that's more my problem than than the frame. So that's on the list as well. Uh, I also have this Hazel frame, uh, the Tour. 98 that I really enjoy great frame and customized a little bit as you can see and uh, This feels like a like a pro stock blade pretty much and uh, Very nice frame that I also keep on my match ready racket list a little bit more control that one One frame that is a bit stiff, but I, that I love using is the FX 500 from Dunlop It's one of those tweeners that I, I can't seem to put away uh, I do feel sometimes a little bit of tenderness after using that for a uh, session, but it's just easy power, very easy playing at the net, great for doubles this frame, so it's very hard for me to put it away completely. And that's why it's still on the list, we'll see for how long. That, that might be thrown out at some point, we'll see, I don't know. And then we have uh, the Bubble Up Soft Drive, uh, which has been in and uh, my racket bag for quite a while. It's the longest a racket has managed to stay in my bag. Uh, so, so kudos to the soft drive uh, from 97 or so, the first edition. So those are the kind of rackets that are on my match ready racket list. There's one frame that's not uh, in my hands here. It's in, in the, in, where is it? Yeah, it's somewhere around here. Uh, it's the Head Prestige Pro, the newest Prestige. I uh, really like that frame that's also on the MRR list. So. A growing list, maybe one has to go and uh, I replace it with the Radical Pro, I'm not sure, we will see. But that's my list of rackets that I feel I can, can take into a tournament and play okay with. Um, obviously, if you're going to be serious about your tournament play, you would like to have one frame that you mainly use, that's your main racket. Maybe you could have some kind of 
you know, back up in case you need more power, you get tired, um, you know, towards the end of the match, or you find out that you need to finish points quicker so you have a more of a power frame, or you're feeling like the racket you're using is, is too powerful and you need a more control option. Um, you can dial this in with strings and string tension, of course, uh, which is generally what the pros do. So if a pro plays a match, they would have X number of rackets strung with different tensions so that they can say, hey, okay, it's very windy, I need more control, uh, or, you know, the ball, it's, it's really playing slow, this court, or the balls are playing slow, I need a bit more pop, so they go down and ten they take a racket that's, that's a few pounds lighter in tension. So um, there are different ways to approach this, but if you're a racket nerd, maybe you'd like my solution with a few different frames. I don't bring all of them with me, but they, these are frames that I could, depending on my mood and my opponent and so on take into a match. I had a situation the other day which wasn't great and uh, maybe you can learn from it. I started the match against a heavy hitting player with a big serve. Uh, so I started it with this frame uh, which was not, and I warmed up with that one, felt, felt great. Then when he hit these really heavy serves I, I couldn't get enough stability from the frame. It was not customized so it's in stock form, 310 swing weight. It's not going to be good for uh, getting really heavy serves back. So uh, I, I moved to the Hazel, uh, played better with that one and um, started making more returns, but I wasn't 100% confident to, uh, to get enough topspin with this one. And for some reason, I, I didn't feel myself playing well on that day, although I played well the day before with the same racket. Madness, I know. Uh, so in, in the end, I, I went for this one and then I managed to start playing well again so I, I really played a good uh, a decent set after so it took me a whole set before i, I found the racket that i needed to to use uh, i still lost the match but at least i played better uh, towards the end with that frame so and and you know it goes up and down the other day i played a fantastic uh, session with the radical pro i played a good match won pretty easily against a good guy and then I, uh, the next time uh, I played, I, I was not good at all. Uh, I wasn't moving well. I would have liked more forgiveness, more power. This is what happens when you're a tennis nerd and you have a bunch of rackets and you can't keep, you can't stop testing new rackets and, and considering new frames all the time. It's a tricky situation. And um, in this video, you will see some footage from my good friend, Matthew Casar Torjani, uh, who's a good player. He's number two in uh, Malta. It's a small island, uh, but he, he can hit a good ball. And um, we, we had a training session where he got the treatment of a true tennis nerd. He normally plays with the V Core 100 uh, from Yonex. Uh, before that, he used the Blade 98 CV 1619. And now he tried a few different rackets and it kind of threw him off. Uh, when he needed to change rackets every 15 minutes or so. It was just a bit of a test for him. And he used the Hazel, he used the new Technifiber T Fight 315, he used the Head Extreme, he used the new Wilson Pro Staff 97, and then he was allowed back to use the Vicor 100. And you, you could see that he, he loosened up and played a lot better after that. But it, it just gave him a taste of what it is to be in my shoes at times. And maybe some of you out there, you know, have the same issue that you come to the court sometimes with four or five different rackets. I'm not a very serious tournament player, to be honest, but um, I, I could definitely play better at times if I, if I had a bit more uh, of a one go-to frame. And, um, but it's, it's not that easy when you're one guy running tennis nerd. Uh, yeah, so uh, you will see some hitting here with Matthew and thanks Matthew for, for hitting with me and taking part in the video. That's all I really had to talk about for this this session, um, if you like this format of the kind of vlog style, uh, please consider becoming a patron because that's what I do most of this uh, stuff. I do one or two a week of these type of videos and I've done for a while. And um, if you want uh, to get a racket consultation, check out tennisnerd.net. Uh, I, I need one myself, I feel sometimes, but I'm testing everything. So I have a pretty good idea of what could work for what player and so on. Uh, so I'm happy to help and it's been um, a very good journey so far. That's all for this one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.
Hey guys, hope everyone's well. Um, hope you're enjoying watching me play. Second time playing with Jonas and um, just trying the Technifiber T5215. Um, there it is. Not sure about it, like it feels good on the forehand. I have quite a heavy forehand, it's okay, but the grip feels a bit like hollow and it's hard to get through the ball with, with a solid feeling. Like it's a consistent hit, but you don't really feel the ball that well. So. So I'm not the biggest fan to be honest. And now I'm gonna try the Hazel. It's just showed it to me now and we're gonna see what it's like. So now I'm trying the new Hazel Rackets, trying the 100, I just tried the 116-19. Now I'm gonna try the 98-18-20. Um, my thoughts about the 100, I feel like the, the head is quite circular, but like it has quite a, quite a firm solid feeling. Like you can get good spin on the ball, a bit powerful for my liking, but yeah, it's not bad. We're gonna try the 98 now, see how it goes. So I'm playing with the Hazel 98 now, uh, 1820. Um, I really like the, the feeling, the, the, has a good feeler racket. It doesn't generate as much power as the 100 obviously, and that's a 1619. But um, man, this one plays really well, I like it a lot actually. I wouldn't mind a bit of a looser tension for some more power, but otherwise it feels good.
No way. Got a tie break with the new Pro Stuff 315 version 13. Some of Matthew's audio fell away there, and uh, I just wanted to give you the list of kind of comments about each frame that he played. He played with a lot of different frames. From the beginning, you saw the Technifiber uh, RS uh, T Fight RS 315, which he wasn't a huge fan of the feel. Felt a little bit thick the beam, he said, and then a bit sluggish through the air. And uh, the second racket was the Hazel Tour 100 which he enjoyed but was had a bit too much power for his liking and then he played with the Hazel Tour 98 where he played some amazing drop shots and had a really impressive feel he really liked that one but it was a strung a bit too tight around 24 kilos so it might have been a bit too tight for that frame uh, I'm still trying to dial in the tension on that one then he used the Pro Staff 97 version 13 strung with uh, Luxlon RG uh, he really liked the feel of that frame, uh, was a little bit underpowered for, for what he likes usually. Uh, so he wasn't, you know, wasn't his favorite frame, although he did like the, the feel and enjoy that. And then he used the Head Extreme MP, which was a bit erratic. Uh, it was the, probably the racket he liked the least of these. It was strung with Head Hawk uh, that's been in the racket for a long time. So uh, probably that was making the racket a little bit more erratic than, he, than it would have been otherwise. And then he went back to his V Core 100, where he started feeling at home again. He was playing better with that frame. It was quite evident from the first couple of shots. Uh, that seems to suit him pretty well. It's, it's a relatively new racket for him as well, because it's a 100 square inch frame, and he, he was always used to a 98. But uh, some extra pop is usually welcome in, in today's game. And if you have a lot of topspin on your uh, strokes, uh, then you can handle that 100 square inch uh, powerful frame. Uh, for my game, which yeah, is flatter nice. and more about taking the ball early, uh, I need a little bit more control than that usually. So, uh, uh, But it's, it's good to understand your game style and what kind of specs you prefer. So when you come across a racket that you really like, try to list down the different specs about that frame, the stiffness, the balance, the weight, uh, the swing weight if you can. Uh, to really figure out why you like that frame and maybe you get like at least a spec range that could work for you and will help you find the right uh, frame for you. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good tip. So when you come across a frame you really like, try to figure out why you like that frame and, and put it down on a, on a note. Uh, so that's all for this video. I uh, had a lot of fun playing with Matthew. I hope I can do so soon again. And he wants to taste, test more frames. Um, so I hope you like this kind of different video formats try a bit of different things see what works and if you have any feedback uh, ship it over uh, and I'll be happy to look at it as long as it's constructive and not too negative uh, so that's all for this video I hope you all have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis